Welcome to episode 77 in our series on Judas of the Heart. Uh, we are up to uh, chapter 3. Uh, we're just past halfway through uh, in the gate of self-accounting. And in this chapter, Rabbeinu Bahia is, is uh, giving 30 examples of self-accounting. And the one we're going to deal with today describes the virtues of solitude and the ill effects of association with uh, people who are not very good for us. Um, so he'll explain. So Rabbeinu Bahia begins, When a person's soul longs for the company and camaraderie of other people, he should reflect on the virtues of solitude and separation from others, and on the ill effect of associating with fools when this is not absolutely necessary. Among the ill effects of companionship with them is needless talk. He said, and it has been said, and other long-winded, superfluous babbling. King Solomon said in Proverbs 10 verse 19, When there is too much talk, mistakes are not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is prudent. A sage once said, Withhold your extraneous words and muzzle your extraneous speech. Further ill effects are gossip, slander, and deprecation. Scripture says of one with such habits, and he quotes again from Psalms 50 verse 20, 20, You sit and slander your brother, you malign the son of your mother. Further ill effects are falsehood and lies. Of this it says also in Psalms 55 verse 12, Falsehood is in its midst. And from Yirmiyahu chapter 8 verse Verse 6, I gave heed and listened, they speak untruth. Further ill effects are false and trivial oaths, of which the Creator has said, and he quotes from Shemos, chapter 20, verse 7, God will not allow it to go unpunished. A pious man once said to his disciples, The Torah has permitted us to swear truthfully in God's name, but I advise you not to swear by his name at all, either truthfully or falsely. Just say it is so or it is not so. Further ill effects of associating with fools are arrogance and scorn, ridiculing part of those who are present and scoffing with them. I have devoted one of the gates of this book to countering such traits, the gate of humility. So Rabbeinu Bahia is describing something that I think everybody can appreciate. Um, social gatherings where gossip is the main, uh, is the main uh, dish on the menu. And uh, we all know that uh, people get carried away and it almost becomes like a gossip frenzy sometimes. And you really have to have a lot of self-control nowadays to extricate yourself and take yourself far away from um, gossip mongers because nothing good com comes from it and um, they're very nasty people to be associated with for various reasons which Rabbeinu Bahia is going to describe. He continues, Among the ill effects of their company is also the absence of fear of God in one's heart when mingling with people and talking with them, coupled with their near impossibility of escaping monetary loss at their hands and becoming the object of their slander. Never forget, if you sit amongst gossip mongers, as soon as you leave their company, the first person that's going to be slandered is you. So remember that. Uh, uh, anyway, Rabbi Nibahaya continues, Further ill effects are currying favour and love of fame, becoming proud before others and wishing to appear great in their eyes with respect to what one knows and does not know of various fields of knowledge and deeds. Another consequence of their company is the obligation to enjoin right conduct and warn against evil, as we were commanded by the Creator when he said, and he quotes from Vayikra, chapter 19, verse 17, you must reprove your fellow. So this is very interesting. Um, once you're uh, amidst a gossiping group, it's very hard to, uh, to, to kind of defy them defy the, uh, the, the kind of uh, the tribe, so to speak. If you're amongst gossipers, if you stand up for people, you're ridiculed even more than the person they are slandering uh, because you seem to be uh, 
uh, contra what they're about and that's no good for you uh, in their eyes. So they, he, Rabbi Bahia continues, we are obligated to object to evil in three ways. Number one, by striking with the hand, as Pinchas did in the incident of Zimri and Kazbi. Now this incident, I believe, is Zimri and Kazbi were, were, were I think, um, children of uh, chieftains, and they got involved together in some uh, licentious actions to say the least. And Pinchas, in order to uh, keep the law, uh, I think killed Zimri. Um, so he took the law into his own hands to object to evil. Um, and the second way one must object to evil is by objecting in words, as Moshe, our master, did when he said to the wrongdoer, why are you striking your fellow? That's from Shemot 2 verse 13. And the third way is by objecting in one's heart, as King David said, and he quotes from Psalms 26 verse 5, I hate a crowd of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. If one can intercede with force and does not do so, he is delinquent. If he cannot intercede with force, he should object verbally. And if he cannot object verbally, he should object in his heart. Thus, we are bound to object to evildoers under all circumstances, as the uneducated inevitably fall short of fulfilling their duty. So this means you should really be a brave person, and if you have to object forcefully against people's actions in these circumstances, because you are going to be as bad as them if you don't object in any way, whether it be in by, by the limbs or in the heart. And Rabbeinu Bahia continues, When you are alone, however, you are undoubtedly excused from the duty to enjoin good and warn against evil, which is a difficult duty to fulfill and discharge, as our sages of blessed memory said. And he quotes from Arachin, chapter, uh, page 16, onward base. I doubt if there is anyone in this generation who can accept reproof. I doubt if there is anyone in this generation who knows how to reprove. Further ill effects of their company and friendship are the corruption of good judgment, the weakening of intellectual perception, and the strengthening of base instinct, and one acquires their negative traits. As King Solomon said in Proverbs 13 verse 20, he who befriends fools will become base. Uh, that's very true. Uh, you lay down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. For this reason, our masters of blessed memory said, children's talk and sitting in the assembly places of the ignorance drives a person out of this world. That's from Ethics of Our Fathers, chapter 3, verse 10. In short, most transgressions, in order to be committed, require at least two persons. Such, uh, such are fornication, unethical business dealing, perjury and false testimony. And all transgressions in speech are committed only when associating and mingling with other people. Solitude and separation from others save one from all the transgressions we have mentioned and are among the strongest factors in the development of positive character traits. It has been said that the mainstay of purity of heart is a love of solitude and a preference for isolation. Therefore, beware, my brother, lest your evil inclination deceive you and make socializing and mingling with people seem attractive to you, lest it tempt you when you are alone and secluded to yearn for their company. Take care also not to be misled by the notion that association with the wise who know God and his Torah and mingling with outstanding personalities entail negation of solitude and renunciation of the virtues of isolation. On the contrary, these constitute the very essence of solitude and isolation and the virtues of association with devotees of love and kindness and religion are many above and beyond those of isolation and too numerous to recount. King Solomon said in Proverbs 13 verse 20, he who seeks out the wise will become wise, but he who befriends fools will become base. Uh, also from Proverbs 22 verse 17, incline your ear and hear words of the wise. 
and of one who does not associate with devotees of loving kindness. He said, also from uh, Proverbs 15 verse 12, a scoffer dislikes being rebuked. He will not go to the wise. So Rabbeinu Bahia is really telling us something very important. We are who we associate with, or we become who we associate with. If you, if you hang around with people who are uh, wiser than you, better than you, and are devotees of uh, gods, you will raise yourself to their levels. If you hang around with people who are more base than you are, who, are, uh, who have bad habits and bad traits, however appealing their company may be, they will drag you down to their level like quicksand. So beware. And Rabbeinu Bahia concludes this section by saying, Our sages of blessed memory said, and he quotes from Sanhedrin 71 Ahmed Base, Assembly of the wicked is bad for them and bad for the world, but of the righteous is good for them and good for the world. Dispersal of the wicked is good for them and good for the world, but of the righteous is bad for them and bad for the world. And also, he quotes from Ethics of Our Fathers, num chapter 1, Mishnah 4. Let your house be a meeting place for the sages. Dust yourself with the dust of their feet, and thirstily drink in their words. And this is also written in Kings, chapter 3, verse 16. Then those who feared God talked together. God listened and heard. So very valuable words. We must look at ourselves and see who we're associating with. See who we are going to become like in the future. And be careful. Choose wisely who you spend your time with. Your time is extremely important. And um, uh, the people you associate with will shape your future in certain ways. So very interesting. And I really appreciate that the sentiment. And w next uh, episode... We're going to deal with a person's humility, how uh, we contemplate it.